In this video, I'm gonna show you guys 20 Google Pixel features that you need to know about early 2024. I will be making more of these as we progress through the year, so make sure you're subscribed if you get any value out of this one. Now, some of these features are brand new with the recent feature drop from Google, and some are newly improved, and some you might have seen before. And if you have, don't be like. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Instead, maybe just chime in with some of your own tips and tricks in the comments, because I know everybody watching this video would appreciate that. The Pixel 8 Pro is one of the first to get Gemini Nano, and it will also be available on other Pixel devices as well. The Gemini AI is Google's new on-device AI, unlike Bard, which is an online large language model AI, which is completely dependent on the internet. Gemini, on the other hand, is optimized to work on mobile devices, and in some cases, even without internet which of course introduces a bunch of brand new features. And if you do want Bard on your Pixel phone, it is actually possible in some regions around the world. And if you wanna know how to do that, it's not gonna be one of the official tips in this video, but I'll show you how to do it, so stick around. Okay, let's start with an amazing new feature that can help even the most illiterate person write more eloquently with a touch of magic. Well, a magic wand to be more precise. So that means it's gonna be super useful for me. And the way this works is when incoming messages come in, it can assess the message and give you suggestions for automatic responses. This is part of the new AI features. And there is a little setting that you need to switch on, which I'll show you a little later on in the video. But what's even better than that is this, check this out. Let's say I respond to this message like Master Yoda. And I realized that this message doesn't quite sound right. What I can do is hit the magic wand and then we get the option to remix what I wrote or even use Shakespearean wording, make it sound more excited, more formal, more chill, more lyrical, or even shorter. And some of these suggestions are actually hilarious. I've had great fun with this so far and the Shakespeare options are definitely my favorite. Now I am assuming that these features will soon come to the Gboard, probably at some point in this year, but right now you can use this within the Messenger app and it really is fantastic. Now, if this is not switched on by default or you don't get the option to switch it on, let me show you how to do it manually. Come back to the home screen of your Messages app. At the top, hit your little icon. And then here you can go into the Messages settings. Now in this section, you wanna scroll down to the Suggestions section. And here is where you can turn on the Magic Compose feature, which as you can see is experimental right now. If this is not switched on, switch it on and then you should have that feature. And it's also worth reading the small print here, just so you know how this works. When you use Magic Compose, your draft message is transmitted to Google AI servers to generate, rewrite suggestions, then it's deleted and operator charges may apply. And that's because it's working via the text messenger app. But if like me, you're on a very expensive contract where text messages are all included, you don't need to worry about that. Did you know that you can train your Google Gboard to recognize your voice and more importantly, recognize the way that you speak so that when you use the voice to text feature on the keyboard, it will be far more accurate. And this utilizes the Gemini on device AI. So all of your words and phrases and speaking patterns won't be leaked onto the underworld grapevine. So let me show you how to enable this. Open your keyboard, go to the little four squares on the left side of the keyboard, go to your settings icon, go to voice typing, and then here enable faster voice typing. And as you can see, it will download a faster way to recognize your voice. Once downloaded, it works offline. So it's definitely worth turning this on because you know, sooner or later, keyboards are gonna be like baby's toys. You use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. Okay, this one's just a quick tip and something that's built into Google Chrome that I think you could find very useful if you haven't noticed it already. So I'm just gonna show it to you just in case. So whenever you're browsing the internet, whatever website you're on, you can actually highlight any bit of text and instantly search it within a separate tab. So for example, let's say this on the IQ12. If I highlight IQ12 straight away at the bottom, you'll see it's already done a search. I didn't even have to tap search, it just did it for me. And it even gives you the option to expand the search further with these suggestions at the bottom of the screen. And if you wanna take a quick peek at whatever it is, for example, let's say the Antutu score, it brings it up from the bottom of the screen in a kind of pop-up tab. So we can have a quick look at that and then we can swipe it back down 
and carry on with reading whatever it is we were reading. And whenever you see something that you're not quite sure what it is, you can use this feature to look up very quickly and investigate without ever having to leave the web page that you're on. Okay, number four. Have you ever been traveling or going to an event and at the last minute when you get to the gate, you find yourself in a bit of a panic whilst rummaging around through your pockets, through your emails, trying to find the damn ticket? No? Okay, well, it's just me then. But anyway, this feature is cool even if you are super organized. So find your travel ticket or event ticket within your emails. I've mocked up a flight pass here just to show you guys how this works. Once you've found that ticket, what you can now do is screenshot that by pushing the down volume and the power button at the same time. And then straight away, you'll notice you get the option to add it to the wallet. And if someone WhatsApps you, an image with your ticket, you could also screenshot that and add it to your wallet that way too. And once this has been added to your Google wallet, when it gets closer to the time of the event or the flight, you'll actually be able to access that flight ticket information very quickly by holding down the power button on the side of the phone. You'll see an option here to access that ticket without even having to go into the Google wallet. And this means it can reduce the amount of anxiety in your life, or you could say, for soothe, this implies that thou canst diminish the burden of worry within thy life. That's how Shakespeare would say it. And I think we could all do with a bit more for soothing, if I'm honest. So this next one is more of a trick, a kind of hack, as opposed to an official feature built into the Gboard. And it can take your word game to the next level by piggybacking off a feature I showed you earlier on in this video. And also what I used to come up with that Shakespearean version of my own text in the last tip. So if your writing doesn't seem to be flowing very nicely, what you can do is from wherever you're writing on your phone, you can copy a chunk of that text, paste it into the Google Messenger app, hit the little magic wand, and there you go. You've AI corrected your text and created something new in the specific tone that you were looking for. And as I already demoed for you, you can write like Shakespeare. And before you ask me if I even know who Shakespeare is. Yes, I've heard of him. He's a famous pirate. By the way, it's Shakespeare. So hearken, fair friends, and prepared to be enlightened. And this could also be a great way for you to create social media posts and things like that. You already know Google's AI is on the march. Not literally, well, at least not yet. Anyway, dark scenes like that clip from Terminator I just showed you can be difficult to capture with tiny image sensors on smartphones. And that's where the new video boost feature comes in. To step up your night videography game, go to camera, toggle it to video, go to your settings, and here you'll see the new video boost feature. When you enable this, it will automatically switch to 30 frames per second, turn off HDR and limit the frame rates that you can use. Because this is the best format for this post-processing software to actually do its job properly. And now when you film videos in lower light scenarios with the video boost feature, you can actually send these off to Google's AI server to have them improved and sent back to you. Now, once you've captured the video with video boost enabled, you'll see this option at the bottom here, tap that and that will automatically send it off. And the great thing about this feature is it actually creates a new file altogether. So you don't overwrite the original one if you wanted to keep that. And once it's sent off, you can actually leave this screen and it will give you a notification once the boosted version of that video is complete. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's move on to the next one. So there's a great feature built into Pixel devices when there's lots of noise in the background of a video. And you can actually use this on videos you've filmed before. You don't have to enable it before you start shooting. You can do it after the fact. It's kind of off device AI. Check this out. This video right now, this is how it sounds. Let me play the intro of this little clip again with the feature enabled. So there's a great feature built into Pixel devices when there's lots of noise in the background of a video. So there's a great feature built into Pixel devices when there's lots of noise in the background of a video. Lots of noise in the background of a video. So in order to enhance a video clip that you already have on your device, just locate it on the device. Go to the edit button at the bottom of the photos. Scroll across to audio. And here you'll see the audio eraser. And this will automatically adjust the audio levels to improve the audio quality on any existing video that you have. 
And as you can see, it will reduce distracting sound like wind and crowd noise and things like that. And hopefully the road noise that was in this video. And I'm gonna hit auto and save a copy. So once again, it's not writing over the existing file, it's creating its own file with the improved audio. Okay, here's another quick camera tip for the Pixel phone. So go into your camera here, go to video mode by toggling across here, scroll across to the time-lapse, and there's a new feature available within time-lapse. So if you open the settings, here you'll see we have the option now for more light. This is essentially night sight for time-lapse videos, which can brighten everything up for you a little bit more than it could before. And night sight's already brilliant. And if it's got better and you have the option to enable it, you might as well do it straight away. And here's another upgrade. This is a, another camera improvement, but this one doesn't work within the camera app. It actually works within the Google Photos app. To find a picture of yourself where you'd like to improve the lighting on your face. Once you found that photo, if you hit edit, scroll across to tools. And now we have a new tool, which is called portrait light. And you see straight away, it lifts all of the shadows on my face. This is how it looks without the portrait light. And that's how it looks with portrait light on. It really does make a massive difference to photos. So if you have any old photos where your face is too dark in the picture, this will fix that pretty quickly. And here's another post-processing camera upgrade that's been made within the Google Photos app. So if you have a photo like this where the subject maybe moved their head at the last second and made the picture a little bit blurry. You can unblur it. This isn't brand new, but it has been newly improved. And I must admit it was difficult to find a photo that was out of focus. And that's really testament to how good the cameras are here on the Pixel 8 Pro. But this one is a little bit soft here around the edges. You can see there's a little bit of blur. All you do to unblur a photo, as you probably already know, is hit edit here. It might actually suggest straight away to unblur if it feels the picture is blurry, but if it doesn't suggest it, you can go to tools. Here you'll see unblur, you can tap that. Now, one thing I've noticed since having this dog here, it's very dark color. A lot of phones really struggle <laughs> to take photos of this dog because all of the information is kind of crushed, but actually the Pixel does a great job of this. And just to show you the effects of before and after the unblur. So that's before and that's after. It definitely does make a difference and it has been slightly improved. And here's another camera focused feature. And this one's quite dependent on the computer you're using and also the cable you're using. You need a high quality, high speed USB-C to C cable. This one right here is a USB 3.1. Now, when you plug this into a PC or even a Mac, you can actually now use a new feature which you'll see when you bring down the options, expand the Android system notification, and you'll see a brand new feature, which is the webcam option. So yes, you can use your Pixel device as a webcam for your computer. I do have this currently plugged into an Apple Mac laptop, and it is appearing as a webcam that you can choose, but for some reason, it's not showing a video feed. So I need to play around with it a bit more and figure out what's going on. But I think Apple might have locked it from uh, working with FaceTime. And once you have set it up, you've got the ultra wide, you've got 2X zoom, and you can also use the selfie camera. And just remember, you do need that high speed USB-C to C cable if you wanna use this feature. And here's another camera upgrade. And once again, this is a post processing upgrade to the Google Photos app. So you can see this receipt right here has got some drinks spilt on it, some Coca-Cola or something. Now we can actually use the camera to clean this up. Check this out. So once you open your camera, you hover over the receipt itself. You should see a little prompt there with the Google Drive icon to scan the document. So we do that. It places a blue square around the document and then we get a bunch of tools to play with. And the new feature that we have here is the clean tool, which is in the middle. So as you can see, we've got all of the stains there. We've even got my thumb in the picture. If we go to the clean tool, we have brush sizes at the bottom and what we can actually do is select the brush size, draw over the bits we want to clean up, all of this bit here where the drink's been spilt, do all of that, some of that, and there we go. It's cleaned up that receipt. It has added some extra black here, which was unintentional, but check this out. The thumb on this side. Let's get rid of that. 
there we go, it's gone. And you've got a much cleaner receipt now, which is more legible if you need to keep it for your accounting software or for any reason like that. Now we can save it, download it or share it. Okay, so this next new feature is really a last resort. If you happen to break your phone somehow and you need to send it off for repairs, what could happen is they could plug your phone into a computer and using their software, they could access your photos, your private information and all this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that they would, but they could. And if you're worried about that kind of thing, then you're gonna like this feature. So go into your settings, go to system, and at the bottom here, you'll see a new feature, it's called the repair mode. Now this will use two gigs of your onboard storage to kind of compress everything into and lock it up and kind of throw away the key. So even a service engineer cannot access your private stuff. Hopefully you'll never have to use this one, but if you find yourself in a situation where you might need to, just remember where this is. Okay, now let's move on to another feature. This time it's nothing to do with the camera. It's all to do with the Google Phone app. So once you go into the app, you might see a little pop-up with an experimental feature. If you don't see that, don't worry, you still might have it. All you need to do to discover it is hit the three dots in the top right corner, go to your settings, and then here you'll see a new feature called Hold For Me. So this is gonna be particularly handy when you're phoning a company and they have an automated service where you have to push one to go to one extension and push another number to go to another extension. There is already a Google Assistant feature that's designed to deal with this on the phone. And just to check that you've got that enabled, it's called the Direct My Call. So go to that, just make sure this is on. If it isn't on, enable it now because there's no point doing the Hold For Me feature if you haven't got this on. So check this out. The Hold For Me feature will download a package specifically for recognizing when you're being put on hold on an automated call. And just to give you an example of how this works, I'm gonna call a random company here in the UK which definitely uses an automated system to filter calls. So straight away you can see the assistant pops up with the direct my call feature. It transcribes what's being said by the robot voice. So we can reply back with our own robot voice or hit numbers and things like that. Sometimes when you get to the very last step of a robot call, you're put on hold. Now you've got the hold for me feature that once you tap it, when they finally pick up, it'll actually buzz your phone and let you know they finally picked up. I don't think this feature is good. I think this feature is brilliant because I've been on hold trying to get through to companies for hours recently. Shout out to Destination 2, the worst travel operator ever. Never use Destination 2, they're shit. Okay, here's another feature regarding the phone and more specifically, phone and watch. So as you know, when you receive a phone call on a Pixel device, you get the option to screen the call and also message. And when you go to message, you get some quick replies which you can then send to that person to let them know you're busy and you can't pick up. Well now on the watch, you also get the same options, but also coming to the watch very soon is the option to call screen from the watch. I've done all of the updates that this watch needs. This is the Pixel Watch 2 and I still don't have that feature, but maybe in certain regions around the world, you will have it already, but it is coming to the watch. So keep an eye out for call screening on the watch. Okay, here's another feature. If you happen to have the watch and the phone, and here's how you enable it. So you go into your settings, scroll down to security and privacy. And then on this page, you wanna to go to device unlock and then go to fingerprint and face unlock. And then here you'll see this section if you happen to have the watch, it is the watch unlock. I'm just gonna delete my watch for now so you can see the setup. The way it works is it will use the watch to unlock the phone, but only once you've put the pin number in on the watch and your watch will buzz whenever your phone unlocks. So if someone tries to put your phone next to your watch while you're sleeping to unlock your phone, you will get that little buzz to let you know. Just hit continue here, choose the watch you wanna activate it on, and there we go. And you'll notice at the top, it will say unlocked with watch when it works. Now this is a small upgrade, but it is a pretty cool one, especially if you're going on holiday and you wanna see how crap the weather is in your home country in comparison to how good it is where you are. There's a new widget on the Pixel devices and this is how you can use it. So hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen, go to widgets here. You're gonna scroll down to where you see the clock. And here you're gonna choose world clock. Now one thing you must do when you set this up is actually choose 
the countries that you want the clocks for and you can make the backgrounds transparent if you want to or keep them solid and now you can see you have the home country and the holiday country and you can see the two and you also have the weather in those two places on display and if you just want one clock and not necessarily two if you click on it you can actually remove the second country whenever you want and you can actually add more <laughs> so now we just have one clock with the weather okay i'm going to go back to one old school camera trick and the only reason i'm doing this is because it's great fun to play around with especially on old photos so if you've taken a series of photos of a group of people in the hope that one of the pictures is going to be good then you've got a lot of data to play around with when it comes to editing after the fact and i'm sure you probably have a bunch of photos you took at christmas that you could use this on anyway let me show you very quickly so here's a picture of me going through the wall at platform nine and three quarters at king's cross and this picture was taken a few times so this does mean that I can use the best take edit feature. So if you go to edit here, scroll across to tools and then you'll see best take. Now I can choose my face and two other variations of my facial expression in similar photos. So there's one with me smiling a bit more and there's one with me just kind of looking the same as I did in the first one. So I can change my facial expression without changing the rest of the photo. And the great thing about this is if you've got a photo of a group of people, you can do this for each person in that photo. This is great fun to play around with, so definitely use this. Go to edit, go to tools, go to best take. So I think you'll agree, there's nothing quite as vexing as forgetting a goddamn password for an app or a website. And whilst the problem isn't perfectly fixed yet on any device, it does feel like the Google Pixel team have made some steps in the right direction when it comes to reducing the risk of forgetting passwords with a brand new feature called Passkeys. So try this out. Go into your settings, security and privacy. Scroll down to the bottom of this page and you'll see more security and privacy. And on this page, we wanna to go to autofill service from Google and then to the Google Password Manager. Now here are a few tools, including one that can check whether any of the websites that you have passwords to have been compromised. So brace yourself before you use this one because there's a very good chance that one of them may have been, which means your password has been accessed. And if that is the case, the phone will prompt you to fix that straight away. So definitely use the password checkup, but that's not what I wanted to show you in this tip. It is in fact this one, a brand new feature where it says simplify your sign in, tap on that. Here it's gonna show you a list of websites and apps that you can use the new pass keys functionality for. So this is a feature that will allow you to log into websites and apps using your biometrics, the same ones that you use to log into your phone. You can forget passwords, but your phone will never forget your fingerprint. So that's gonna solve a big problem when it comes to certain apps. And this is something that's likely to be more heavily adopted by many more sites in the future. I do think Samsung have something like this that they're working on as well. So do come back to this setting from time to time to see if any more websites and apps have been added to the pass key feature. Anything that can save time and reduce stress, in my opinion, is a good thing. And I think this is a good thing. Okay, so here is another brand new feature. This is gonna be incredibly, incredibly useful for you if you're studying or if you're in some kind of profession where you have to take notes because the Google recorder with the new AI capabilities can pretty much do everything for you. So check this out. I'm gonna record the intro of one of my videos. One of the main reasons so many people love Android is that you're not chained down to a particular look and feel and at any moment you can customize everything. So now that I've transcribed the intro of my video and recorded the audio from it, I have a few options. So I have the audio option here. I can cut sections out and all that stuff. That's always been available. When we go to transcription, the new feature here is the summarize button at the top. So when we tap this, it will use AI to generate a summary of everything that you just recorded. So think about how useful that could be if you fall asleep during a lesson or a meeting and you want to catch up on what was said, it will prompt you to download the AI model the first time you use this. And there we go, we now have a summary 
of what I was just talking about in the intro of that video in nice little bullet points as well. And of course, the longer you record, the more bullet points you're gonna have. Now this AI can actually work offline once you've downloaded that model. Okay, here's another new feature which is called the Smart Reply, which is a Google Gboard feature. And it's in its early phases right now, but if you wanna test it out, this is how you do it go into your settings, go to about phone. Here, you wanna go all the way to the bottom to the build number, tap that seven times until it says developer mode unlocked. And now when you go to your system settings at the bottom of this page, you will see developer options. Go into developer options here. And on this page, you wanna scroll down until you see AI core settings. Go into this and enable AI Core Persistent. Now this will unlock some quick reply features on the Google Gboard. When people message you on apps like WhatsApp, it will give you some suggestions right there on the keyboard. I've been playing around with it, it's a bit hit and miss right now, so the Messages app, however, that's really fantastic in my opinion. When that comes to other Messenger apps and to the Gboard, that's gonna be awesome. Okay, going back to what I said about Bard and having it work on your phone, and at some point having it integrated into the search bar here at the bottom. At the time of this video, you should be able to test this out if you're in the United States. Unfortunately, if you're not in the United States, you won't be able to do it just yet. However, if you go to this website, bard.google.com forward slash chat, it should give you the information you're looking for. If you can test it out right now, now, the option will be here. If you can't, what you can do is hit the three dots in the top right corner here and actually add it to your home screen. And now you have a shortcut to Bard, which is definitely not as seamless as it will be once it's all integrated, but you do have the option to do that right now. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did and you got any value out of it, a little thumbs up would make my day. If you want to check out my best Android launchers video, which includes a launcher that has AI built into it already in the search bar, then that's on screen right now. Go check that out. And if you have the Pixel Watch, there's another thumbnail on screen for tips and tricks for that. And if you missed my original tips and tricks video for the Pixel 8 Pro, that's also on screen. Anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Don't be late. Did you get that? That was Shakespeare. Heard of him? Yes, I've heard of him. He's a famous pirate.